I'm going to tell you about the first time I got gassed, and I say the first time. It's not like it happened at prom or anything like that. But uh, for about 17 years, I worked with a company uh, that provided security for government agencies and, and uh, corporations and stuff like that. I started when I was in college. At some point, uh, being an armed officer, you have to carry an uh, intermediate weapon. And we used to always carry batons. If you guys remember police batons that whack the shit out of somebody with them. <laughs> it's not a good thing. So they, they, they discovered oleoresin capsicum, which is a, uh, for those of you that just speak Spanish, muy caliente. <laughs> it is a gas they spray in your eyes. You've all seen it on TV and, and Mace, and you all see the hippies going absolutely crazy when they gas them at a big protest or something. When you transition to this from the baton to the gas, one of the things they tell you is, guess what? You have to have a mandatory exposure which means we are going to gas you so you know how to deal with it because you're eventually going to get it on yourself as an officer. You will get it on yourself. So police officers and security professionals and military professionals, we all have to get that, be gassed. The first time it happened to me, uh, and I say the first time because I subsequently had to go through the training like three or four times. So. <laughs> which really makes you question your career decisions, I will tell you. The first time it happened to me, they, they, they really prepare you for it. They let you know what, what to expect. Uh, they bring you to the class. You go through the whole class. You learn how it works. And then you line up for your mandatory exposure. And usually, they, or a lot of times, they'll just take a little on a Q-tip and swab it under your eye so you know what it feels like. I did not have such an instructor. He lined us up with our battle buddies or our partners or whatever and walked across the line at about four feet away, which is very common in this type of training, and sprayed us all right in the eyes and in the eyebrows. It's a very bad thing. Uh, if if uh, you see it on TV, I will tell you, it goes away. It's not horrible when you see the hippies crying on TV. It's not that bad. It will go away. It doesn't last forever, and it's much better than getting the shit kicked out of you by a guy with a big stick, okay? <laughs> Just so you know. But they spray it across your eyes, and you have to do a series of, of drills or tests, and you learn how to deal with it once you get it in your eyes and subsequently all over you. Now, when it's over, they prepare you for decontamination as well. And in order to decontaminate... This stuff is like a crazy girlfriend. You cannot get rid of it, okay? <laughs> it gets in your eyes, in your hair, in your clothing, and you've got to decontaminate. One way is to just obviously air out, and that's decontamination. That way it takes a long time, and it is painful, okay? So that sucks. Nobody wants to do that. Another way is through a chemical process called, most commonly called BioShield, and you can spray that in your eyes. That's okay, and it works some of the time. The best is copious amounts of water. It's just the best way to do So if you're, if you're planning a little criminal activity tonight and you get gassed, water is the key. We were very lucky at our training. Uh, we were at a, a government uh, a courthouse and detention facility that had a locker room in the basement. And in the locker room, they had one of those big communal showers like you had when you were in college, you know, like eight shower heads, you know, big square room. And we thought, great, when we get gassed, your battle buddy takes you downstairs, puts you in the shower, and there is nothing you can do but stand and hold your eyes open. <laughs> now, do this at your shower at home without being gassed, and you will realize it's pretty painful. But it is the most soothing thing in the world. <laughs> And you, want no, you, you don't want to be anywhere but in that shower room with your eyes held open. <laughs> and eventually, how that stuff works is your eyes shut, and there's nothing you can do about it. You, you learn to fight with your eyes shut, which is really a stupid idea, by the way. But you learn it. And uh, so you're in the shower room, and you're holding your eyes open, and you realize that all your other friends are, your, your coworkers are in there with you, and they're holding their eyes open. Everybody's crying. We all have it on our clothes. There's nothing you can do. Your nose is running. It's horrible. You're taking off, you're tearing off your shirt, and you're throwing it in the corner, and you're kicking off your shoes. What happens when you decontaminate with water is it runs from your hair, and it runs from your eyebrows back into your eyes, which is really pleasant. 
and then it catches alongside your nose and the corners of your mouth and then into your armpits and in between your toes and your shoes. So you're kicking your shoes off and then it meets your happy place. <laughs> Which if you've been fighting for 15 minutes is gonna be you know, moist and, and not happy anymore. You, do not, you don't know how painful this is until your wiener catches on fire, people. <laughs> it's a bad deal. But that's how you decontaminate. There's nothing you can do. So everybody is in the shower. They're taking off their clothes, and they're going to tell us how to decontaminate our clothes, too. By the way, another bad career to see, if you work at A&W or you work at Walmart or you work at the DMV and you find yourself crying in the shower with six of your coworkers, <laughs> you've probably made some bad personal decisions <laughs> or taken some horrible career advice. But it happens. So everybody's stripping off their clothes and holding their pants open, trying to get, you know, trying to get clean and trying to get decontaminated. And they also warn you that if you take these clothes home afterwards, just, you know, the best thing to do is just throw them away. But if you really like them or they're special to you for one reason or another, you can decontaminate them, take them home, let them dry out, get as much of the contaminant off as you can when it's dry, and then rinse it in the sink, don't put it in your wash machine because you'll contaminate your wash machine and your next couple loads of laundry will make Mr. Happy catch on fire again. <laughs> Not a good thing. By looking at me, you know that I don't own a lot of gym clothes. <laughs> so I decided I would take my, my shorts home, my gym shorts home, and dry them out, flake them much, as much of it off as I could and try to save them. And I took them home threw them on the balcony to dry out because they'd been sitting in the shower for 15 minutes while I cried or a half hour while I cried. <laughs> so I threw them out on the balcony and being in the security industry, you work a pretty cra crazy schedule, nights, weekends, in and out all time. I found myself coming home in the middle of the morning um, after some all night thing and I had to get in a suit and go to another appointment. And as I come out the front door, I realized that my gym shorts, which were decontaminating on the balcony, had blown off. It's North Dakota. It's windy. They'd blown off and landed on the lawn. Well, all right. I was curious. I was in a hurry, but I was curious. I see them laying on the lawn. I go over and I pick them up. And I can still see the orange substance, the crusty orange substance on there. And this had been like two days. I said, you know, I wonder if it's really as bad as they told us in class. So I kind of flaked a little with my thumbnail, and yep, it was. <laughs> my eyes immediately closed again. It was horrible, and I said, oh, I am not saving these. This seemed like a really good idea at the time. <laughs> but you know what? I got a meeting to go to. I'm just going to throw these away. So I carried them around the corner of the building on my way to my car and chucked them in the garbage. Now, I realized at that point that had any of my neighbors been looking out their window, they would have seen me come out the front door, spy a random pair of gym shorts on the lawn, walk over to them, pick them up, scratch them, sniff them, and carry them away. I did not have any trick-or-treaters that year. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody.